I think you get a remarkable sense of how consistent some blenders are with this uh, across roasting companies with this blend because it's it's you can tell that it's similar to the in in concept in uh, aspiration it's similar to the uh, number the first one similar a uh, character directionally i think it has the deep yeah kind of resonant, it's a little more high tone that I think that there is another wet hold in here. We didn't talk about how I blew it on the mocha component on the last one. I said I thought it was a, a uh, Yemen coffee and it was a, apparently, I, I don't really believe it completely, but <laughs> they said it was a wash uh, Ethiopia yoga chefe. They did. Now this one, the mocha component, I think it probably is a washed Ethiopia, I would guess, because at least I'll be safe and describe what I'm smelling, which is a kind of a balanced but high-toned, gently bright coffee with uh, fruit, clean fruit and floral notes. Mm. Yeah, I don't, but it has a depth, and the depth, uh, it could come from a very clean wet hauled coffee, Sumatra or something, or it could come from something else. It could come from a Brazil, for example. But I, I think it's probably a very nice wet hauled coffee. Again, wet hauled is synonymous above all with Sumatra, Indonesian islands, including Java. There's a wet hauled Java. Ken, are there any wet hauled coffees done outside of Indonesia? that you know of at all? Not regularly, no. That some Chinese producers have experimented with it. No, it's, it's an Indonesian mm. thing. And a, East Timor, which is, shares island with, with Indonesia, is, uh, may do some wet haul too, but it's the Indonesian archipelago that produces the wet hold, along with other coffee, other styles of coffee too, of course. Do you have any comments on the nose? Yeah, it's a very deep coffee. It's, it's distinctive. Both these are, uh, there is something about mocha javas, even though I know most coffees that I've had labeled mocha java in my lifetime, I'm sure are what I would call a paste or an attempt to duplicate uh, without using particularly a mocha and uh, either, you know, probably Indonesians. Indonesians are by far easier to get other than Java. Java's rare, but, um, you know, there's, I'm sure some people substitute Papua New Guinea and other, uh, and Sumatra. Sorry, Kevin, but it wouldn't be Papua New Guinea because Papua New Guinea produces washed coffees, very bright, classic washed coffees. So, so you don't think they're used at all, no. probably, in trying to uh, put the Java no, component no. in? Whereas, a, whereas a, a, a Brazil would make more sense because they, they do right. dry process. The, the island of New Guinea is split between the independent Papua New Guinea, where most of the, the coffees are produced, these wet processed coffees. The other half of the island is a state in Indonesia, Irian Jaya and they produce coffees there, those could be wet hauled, but it's very unlikely. If there's a wet hauled mm -hmm. coffee, it probably comes from Sumatra, and if not Sumatra, other Indonesian islands, possibly Java, there are other islands, not Papua New Guinea. Okay. Well, have a taste of this. Mm. It transitions from the nose to the cup smoother than the number one. You taste the kind of fruity sweetness. Again, that I think that fruity sweetness could, could in part come from the Java component, which probably is a very nice, clean Sumatra, because there's the earthy component too, right? Kind of a, a multi depth, yeah. and then we have the sweetness of the uh, of a fruit character. 
It's probably some kind of Ethiopian coffee. And I'd have to say it washed Ethiopia. Oh yeah. Because the taste is kind of high toned. The mouth feel is less substantial, less plush, kind of a little bit leaner. Still pleasant though. The finish maybe isn't quite as satisfying as, as number one. Give me the name of number one again. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. This uh, that is the fresh roasted fresh mocha roasted. java. I don't think it's complex as the fresh roasted mocha java, the number one. But very pleasant cup, much cleaner in a sense. Somebody who's looking for something that that trends more towards a familiar. Latin American style cup much like this one better yeah. than number yeah. one. It's simpler, a lot simpler. I think we're gonna okay. reveal it. And this is here, let me let me first get it out here for you. Well, it doesn't say this much. I see a guy flying through the air uh, in a suit. Oh that's that's uh, it's Oren's Daily oh. Roast. Is that I didn't know Oren <laughs> I knew he was from Manhattan, but I didn't know he could fly like Superman. Yeah, he can. Uh, and <laughs> after, especially after drinking a lot of coffee okay. like this. Well, I know more about this coffee. This is a, uh, a roughly 50-50 blend, as the other one was, too. Now, get this. Costa Rican washed coffee. Okay. Because he's out of Ethiopian. The first thing he told me is, well, I'm out of Mocha Java right now because I don't have any Ethiopian. And he said, we've been shipping it to people who insist on having it with a Costa Rican wash coffee. And the other half is a washed Sumatra Mandela. Washed? Yes. And which I've had separately, so I'm, I'm well aware of that coffee. Okay which is one reason I, I reached out to him and I asked him, are you using uh, Sumatra for your mocha java? And he said, yes. Well, I, w said, I would wonder, one. it could be washed because again, this is a very clean cup. There are washed Sumatras, usually done by big mills that don't, they don't follow that procedure on wet hulling that I described earlier. You see, technically, wet hulled coffee is a washed coffee. <laughs> it just wash. Yeah, that's what I was washed wondering coffee too. Coffee with a, a variation. So, uh, if the variation is handled very well and and the coffee is dried decisively, there shouldn't be too much difference. Maybe just a kind of a heavier body and and maybe a bit more character in the uh, wet hulled. So. It could be a very clean wet hold. I did say it was a coffee that would be more pleasing to somebody who was accustomed to a Latin American cup. Now, didn't I, Kevin? Yes, and I, I heard you say that, and I, knowing uh, what coffees were in it, I was, I was sort of smiling to myself. Well, he is good. <laughs> he caught it. It's a nice Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah you see, Costa Rica's... When we're buying coffees casually, we often forget that coffee is seasonal. Costa Rica's are fresh now, Central America's are fresh, and Ethiopia is a kind of a tricky coffee that comes in over a long period of time because the, the getting it out of Ethiopia is tricky sometimes. So it could be that uh, it, this would be typical of Ethiopia's now, the, the Central Americas, which are close to the U U.S. and handled in a very standard business-like way, come in first. Harvest is about the same in both cases, because they're both from the Northern Hemisphere. But the Ethiopia's come in sporadically. Uh, but he's done very well. It's a very nice blend. Again, the, the cost of 50% Costa Rica really kind of lifts it and makes it brighter and still sweet, reduces some of the depth and complexity, perhaps. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.